Our next lesson is called the commutative and associative properties day two. So in our first example, we wanna look at how we can actually prove a statement using our properties. So in example one, is it true for all real numbers x, y, and z that x plus y in parentheses plus z should equal x plus z plus y in parentheses? Let's use the properties to prove this is true. So a couple of things you wanna keep in mind. Whatever they tell you are starting with is your starting point. And then whatever they're asking you to have it equal is your ending point. Okay. Now, the other key to this, to try to keep it so that you can handle it, you want to do it only one step at a time. So only one step at a time. So do not try to do more than one thing at a time, even if it is the same property. So we'll say, even if, same property. We'll just do prop for property. Okay, so if I see something like x plus y in parentheses plus z, I'm trying to make moves, one move at a time, one property at a time, to make it look like the end point. So one thing I noticed looking from beginning to end is that originally the x and the y are together in parentheses, and at the end the z and the y are together in parentheses. And I also noticed that it used to go x, y, z, and now it goes x, z, y. So I know at some point the order changed and the grouping changed, which means I'm using associative property and commutative property. So the way I started it was I started by changing the grouping first. So I changed this to x plus and I put the, the parentheses around y plus z. And the reason I'm allowed to do that is the associative property. Okay. Then I notice I'm closer because I have the z and the y together in parentheses, but my endpoint has the z first and the y second. So that means I still need to switch the order. So this is going to become x plus, and then I'm going to do z plus y. And I am allowed to do that because of the commutative property. And now I have proven why those two things are the same. And I've proven it because I've used the properties to showcase it. In example two, it says the following is a proof of the algebraic equivalency of 2x in parentheses cubed and 8x cubed. Fill in each of the blanks with either the statement commutative property or associative property. So we want to go through and talk about which property was being illustrated. And this first line can be a little tough. If you look at from 2x cubed to 2x times 2x times 2x, one would feel like they might want to write that that was just an expansion. But making groups and taking groups away all has to do with regrouping. So if it has to do with regrouping, it's the associative property. Now in step two, you're going to notice that nothing's changed in the order, 2x, 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 but we've added some parentheses and grouped some different things together. So again, this is an example of the associative property. Now underneath, if I look at the line before, 2x, 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 now becomes 2, 2x, 2xx. So now I can tell the order has changed, but my grouping has not because the 2 and the x are still in parentheses here as they were here and here as they were here. So this line is an example of the commutative property. In the line underneath, you're going to notice that some groupings have changed again. Now we have a different x and 2 grouped together in parentheses. So this is an example of the associative property. From that line to the next, the x and the 2 are still in parentheses, but in this line, the x came first, in this line, the 2 comes first. So that's a change in order, which is the commutative property. Now you can see I've regrouped. If I erase these markings, just so you can see a little bit better, you'll notice 
that the 2x was in parentheses, and now we have all the 2s in parentheses and all the x's in parentheses, which means, again, it was a change in grouping. So this is the associative property, showing that I really have 8x to the third power, or 8x cubed. All right, let's look at example 3. It says, let a, b, c, and d be real numbers. Fill in the missing expression of the following diagram to show that a plus b in parentheses plus c in parentheses plus d is equal to a plus b plus c plus d in parentheses. So we're trying to show that those two things are happening. And it's already started for us. So we're doing all different forms of proof. First, we've started beginning to end and did it completely on our own, making the moves in the symbols and describing the properties. In example two, all the mathematical moves were made for us and we're just describing what happened in the proof with the properties. And now this is an example of the missing piece. Okay, so you have to figure out what goes in the missing blank. So if we take a look from the first arrow to the second arrow, we're going to notice that the parentheses that were around A and B are now around B plus C instead. So you can see the associative property was used. Then something's gonna happen from two to three and then at 4, we end up with the C plus D in parentheses, then the B added, and then the A in front. So it's our job to come up with what the missing piece was. Okay, so if we look from 2 to 4, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. The order is already all set, but what's off is the grouping. So the B plus C is currently together, but right now we have the A grouped in right here in part 2. And we need that A to be separated. So we're going to do A plus, and then we're going to have our parentheses B plus C, and then the plus D, because now it makes sense that if I move the parentheses around B plus C and change it to C plus D, I'll be in spot four, which is where I needed to end up. So sometimes the proof will be done for you, but there'll be a missing piece that you need to fill in with what's missing. And then in our final example, example four, this is an example of a proof through a diagram. So use the following abbreviations for the properties of real numbers and complete the flow diagram. C plus is going to stand for the commutative property of addition. C with the small x, the x is standing for multiplication, so commutative property of multiplication. A plus would be associative property of addition. And A times is the associative property of multiplication. The mathematical part of the proof, again, has already been done for us, and we're going to use this part as our starting point. As you can see, it's bolded. And it's our job to put in what property was used to get around the flow chart. So if we take a look at this one first, and we can go in any order we want, I'm just choosing that one first. If I try to take a look at the difference from this expression to this expression, I'm going to notice that the order has changed. The 5 times a plus 2xy was second in this first one. And now you can see it's first in this next one. So that means the order has changed and it changed with addition. So this is going to be a C plus, community of addition, or commutative property of addition. Okay. Now why don't we go down here and take a look at how we got from here to here. So we're going to look at this spot right now. So if I take a close look at this one, the five times stuff is still second and the X and four is still first. But I notice within these parentheses right here, it was X plus four and now it's four plus X. So that tells me that the order changed with addition. So this is another C plus. All right, let's continue down this way and let's take a look at this one as our third spot. If I'm looking at this arrow, I notice that the four plus X that was grouped together is no longer grouped together. The X has become part of the other group. So we know that's associative and it was a plus sign addition. So we're gonna put plus there. All right, let's look at this as our fourth spot. Looking at these two, I see that the four that was in front is now been moved to the back. So that's a change in order with addition. So that's the commutative property of addition. Let's go back up here and we'll do this one as our number five spot. Okay, so if I look at the purple that was here compared to what is here, I'm noticing that right in this spot, 
the 2x, then y, has now become the y, then the 2x. So this is actually a change in order, not grouping. It was 2x in parentheses, then y. Now it's y, and then 2x in parentheses. So this is a change in order, but with multiplication. So commutative property of multiplication. And then in our last spot, We're going to have this as spot 6. And again, you can go any way you want around the diagram. I'm just showing you what spot we're headed to. We are looking at this expression compared to this expression. So I don't see anything different except for what I circled in teal before. This says 2x, then y. And now all of a sudden it's 2 and then xy has been grouped together. So this is associative property of multiplication. Okay, so in conclusion, there's a couple points we want to talk about and make here at the very end. Number one, it is unnecessary to place parentheses among a sum or product of terms because of the associative property of addition of multiplication. Okay, so just some examples. If I look at the expression a plus b in parentheses, then I'm going to group the c inside and then put the d. Okay, there's one way to write the expression. I could have a plus b plus c plus d. I could also have a plus b plus c plus d. But all of those expressions, if using multiplication or addition, are going to be the exact same as just having a plus b plus c plus d as a single expression with no parentheses. Next, number two, numerical symbol. Numerical symbol is the representation of a specific number. So for examples, it's just another way to talk about numbers. Zero, one, um, two-thirds, negative three. I'm trying to give all different representations. How about a decimal? Negative 124.5, an irrational number, pi. Those all can be referred to as numerical symbols, which is different from what we know about as a variable symbol. For a variable symbol, we're talking about a placeholder for a number. So questions may restrict the value of the variable, for example, using only whole numbers. So just know that a variable is a placeholder. For the most part, the variable can be any real number unless the directions state otherwise and say you're only allowed to use certain types of numbers. For example, x is a whole number. And then in number four, we have a reminder of what the definition of an algebraic expression is. It is a numerical symbol or a variable symbol or a phrase formed as a result of symbols with an operation. So we can have lots of different algebraic expressions. 2x would be an example. You've got the product of a number and a variable. Uh, a minus 2 would be an example of an expression. You could have 24 divided by t, so division as an expression. Um, and then you can have something, let's use some exponents here, 2x squared minus 4. That counts as an expression. The big takeaway with expressions is remember they're not equations because they do not have an equal sign. Okay, And that concludes our lesson on the commutative and associative properties day two.